Hi, my name's Neil, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can use silhouettes within your wedding photography to create really striking, vibrant, and dramatic looking images. And in particular, I'm going to give you my top three tips to make awesome silhouette photographs. Good silhouette images can be absolutely amazing. In fact, the only downside to silhouettes is it it's actually a word that I can never spell. I think it's S-I-L-H-O. So silhouette photographs are relatively easy to take, but they're very hard to get right. This video is all about wedding photography, but here are some silhouette photographs which I took when I was lucky enough to photograph Laura and Aaron's wedding in Hong Kong last year. I just love looking out for silhouette shots like this and really trying to train my eye to see them. As a wedding photographer, training your eye to look for potential silhouettes is massively helpful as they are a great way to quickly give you a really creative and totally different perspective on a scene. So they're a brilliant way of giving you your work more variety. A silhouette photograph is basically where we are exposing our camera for a very bright background but we focus on something in the foreground and because we're exposing for the bright background anything in the foreground will obviously be underexposed. Personally my favourite silhouette shots are when our subjects in the foreground are completely black. That's when I think you get the really most dramatic looking striking images. So the key thing to remember is that whenever you see a bright area in a composition, whether that be the sky, a bright light, a door, or a window, for example, that is when you have the potential to create a silhouette photograph. We can also create the bright area ourselves using flash, as I've done in these examples here. In each of these images, I've placed the flash behind the bride and groom facing away from them to light up the wall behind them. And this can be a really effective way of creating a very dramatic looking silhouette photograph. So if you can, what you want to try and do is to try and train your brain to look for these bright areas so that when you do see them, you instinctively think to yourself, could I do a silhouette photograph here? When we think of silhouettes in relation to wedding photography, it's very easy just to think about them in relation to bride and groom portraits. But it's really important to remember that there's potential for silhouettes at any point during a wedding day. For example, here's some shots which I took during bridal preparations. And this shot was taken during a drink reception. Silhouettes can also make really cool group shots, as I've tried to do here. And this is a shot of a best man giving his speech. So the key thing to remember is wherever you see bright light, there is opportunity for a silhouette. And as I say, it's about training your brain to think that way. See a bright light, think, oh, could I do a silhouette? So when I was thinking about this video, I thought of three main things which I feel go into the makeup of a really good silhouette wedding photograph. But before I talk about those three things, here's just a few quick tips just to kick things off. Firstly, you want to get low, especially when the background is the sky, the better the overall photograph will be as we get to see more of the bright background in relation to the subject. Also, if we're shooting silhouettes in natural light outdoors, the best times by far are sunrise and sunset. You also want to underexpose your shot much more than you think. It's very easy when shooting into bright light to think that your shot is correctly exposed when in actual fact it's probably still a little bit overexposed. Using your camera's histogram or a loop if you're using a DSLR can be really helpful with this. And remember, you can always bring up your exposure in Lightroom, you can always bring up the shadows, but you can't recover blown highlights. So it's always better to underexpose more than you probably think, just to be on the safe side. And also, where possible, try to place your subject in front of the brightest part of the background. The human eye always looks at the brightest part of an image first. So placing your bride and groom in front of the brightest area will naturally make for a much stronger composition. Here are some examples where I've done this. 
And as you'll see, your eye with these photographs will naturally go exactly where I would like you to go because naturally, as I say, your eye is going towards the brightest area of the photograph, which also happens to be where I put the subject. So what makes a good silhouette photograph? Well, for me, it's about three things, composition, shape and separation. So let's talk about each of those in a little bit more detail. So first up, composition. Good composition is vital in a silhouette photograph. By their nature, silhouette photographs are often made up of large areas of black. So if the composition isn't interesting, they can actually be quite easily quite boring, especially if the shot contains nothing but the sky and our bride and groom. So my advice is to try and include other things in your frame which add to the composition and make it more interesting, such as in these examples here like trees, reflections, lamp, or in this example where I got very, very lucky on an engagement shoot, a dog. It can also be tempting to shoot silhouettes really close up, but I find that the most dramatic silhouette photographs are when we really take a step back and we shoot really wide. Often, the wider we go, the more interesting and dramatic the overall composition becomes. As you'll see here, I've gone really far back in these examples, and I think it makes the whole scene come together really nicely, as opposed to me just concentrating on the, the bride and groom and the immediate background. Okay, and number two is shape. Again, because silhouette shots can be quite, quite boring, it's possible for them to be boring, it's really important that we try as best we can to make the pose and shape of our subjects really interesting. So when it comes to bride and groom portraits, there's nothing wrong with having your bride and groom facing each other. This is something I've done an awful lot, but whenever I can, I try to inject a little bit of movement into the pose to make the shot just look more dynamic. In the past, I've done this by asking the bride and groom to walk, holding hands with one another, just like this. You can also use the bride's dress or her veil to create a more dynamic pose. Or in this shot, which is one of my favorites, which was taken on an engagement shoot, I asked James to pick up Katrina and I just love the shape which this pose created. It's far more interesting, in my opinion, than just having the couple stood next to each other and looking at each other. So if you can, always try to inject some movement into the posing of the bride and groom. It'll just really help make that shot come alive. And the last thing to remember, and it's probably the biggest tip that I can give you, is to remember separation. Separation is absolutely vital for a good silhouette photograph. It's so easy to forget this, but separation really is the difference between a silhouette photograph working and it, well, not working. For example, if I'm taking a photograph of a bride and groom, I will always ask them to keep their heads close but not quite touching and that's the important bit because as soon as their heads touch, the silhouette doesn't work, in my opinion anyway, because their heads just become joined because we're obviously we're just talking areas of black. So we really need the separation between the two, between the heads, just to show us the shape because as I say, as soon as they join together, it just becomes like a black mess. And this is a really good example of, this is one of my favorite photographs from Francesca and Andy's wedding last year. Uh, I love the way that Francesca is holding her dress and her pose is amazing, like she's really nailed this. But the, the thing that really works for me is that tiny, tiny gap between their heads. If their heads were touching, I, I think the whole photograph would just sort of fall apart, uh, even despite the fact that Francesca's pose is so, so good. So as I say, separation is absolutely vital. It's something you always want to be aware of because it really is a difference between a shot working and not working. So just to recap, silhouettes can be an absolutely brilliant way of creating really interesting, vibrant and cool wedding images. Try to train yourself to think, can I take a silhouette whenever you see an area of bright light? But just remember to think about composition, shape, and I say, most of all, separation. 
So, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. It's been really good for me because when I was putting this together, I think I finally cracked how to spell the word silhouette. So it's S-I-L-H-O-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.